Good morning. So having been here in Lancaster, Ohio for about four months now, it's been interesting to see the changes. It's been interesting to see uh, kind of and get a, get a feel for what this city uh, is about and what the city likes and what the city loves. And one of the things that's kind of surprised me is uh, how much this, uh, how many yards I see with Halloween decorations, how much the city seems to care about Halloween. Um, and you know, this, this is maybe more of a negative than a positive in some ways, and it's fine in other ways, but it is interesting. And so what I see is, uh, just at casually not knowing too much about it, is I see there's people that care and people that um, appreciate, you know, this idea of Halloween and horror and whatnot. And so what I got this morning is maybe a Halloween sermon. Um, Maybe a little bit. So a common horror theme, common uh, premillennialist theme is this idea of the Antichrist. It's something that you see, again, in a lot of horror movies and a lot of, in a lot of Halloween things. We see it in movies all the time. Uh, often uh, the Antichrist in, in the media is portrayed as this idea of like, he's a little boy named Damien. He has black hair. He was born, um, what, June, June 6th. 1966, you know, you got that 666 in there, um, and he's the literal son of Satan, and, <laughs> you know, from a big, biblical standpoint, like, that, that's ridiculous. We, we understand that's ridiculous, but we got a certain demographic of people that that's their exposure, that's what they think of, and then we also have uh, maybe more in the Christian spectrum, in the Christian realm of things. We've got the idea of the, we got the idea of uh, the premillennialist. Uh, Antichrist, And so we've got a group of people that actually believe uh, something along the lines of the Antichrist will be a person. And there's a set of things that this Antichrist will do. Um, he's going to be a politician or a leader of some kind. He's going to be very good to the Jews. And then he's going to betray them. And then he's going to lead the world into tribulation. And so he's almost like this Christian boogeyman in some people's minds. This idea of the Antichrist is going to come. And, and when he comes, we got to um, be ready because that means the rapture is about to happen. And so what we're going to look at this morning is, who actually is this Antichrist? Is there any truth to that? And our, our approach here is very simple. We're going to open our Bibles. We're going to read. What does God's word actually tell us about this Antichrist, this idea? And then we're going to make our, our application from that. Um, Antichrist itself is a very interesting word. It's very simple. It's a compound word. Antichrist. Um, and so at face value, it's very simple, a very simple idea. It is somebody who is against Christ. And in many ways, it's that simple. Um, what we're going to find here is there's really only one author in the whole Bible that even uses this word. You're going to find John is the only author in the Bible who uses this. He only uses the word five times, really in four different passages. And interesting enough, he doesn't use it in Revelation at all. So... That, that might give you a hint as to, as to the truth about him. Um, so if you will, open with me to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, um, verses 18 through 24. And that's where we're going to get started. Starting in verse 18. Children, it is the last hour. And just as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming. And even now, many Antichrists have appeared. From this, we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they are not really of us. For if they had really been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out, and, and that it would be shown that they are not of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One that you all know. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know truth, and because there is no lie, and because no lie is of the truth. He who is a liar, sorry, who is the liar, but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father. The one who confesses that the Son has the Father also. As for you, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you have heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and the Father. So this is our first little passage. We've got a number of uses of this word Antichrist. So what is John actually telling us about this guy? Let's just walk through it. Let's walk through very basically uh, what these verses are saying, and learn about the Antichrist. First of all, there is more than one Antichrist. Verse 18, um, you have heard the Antichrist is coming, and now many Antichrists have appeared. So this automatically, very easily, uh, 
fixes our preconceptions about lots of ideas of what this guy is. First of all, it's not one guy. There's not one antichrist who's coming. It's many antichrists. So is, is he a little boy named Damien? No. There are many antichrists. Is he a political leader that's coming to bring about the tribulation? No. No. There's many antichrists. So it's not a singular person, but it's a type of person. There are people who are antichrist. That's what we learn. Uh, further, in, in verse 18, we will see when they appeared. Because even now, many Christs have appeared. And from this, we know that it is the last hour. So even now, antichrists have appeared. Got to remember, this is John writing to the first century church. So when is now? Well, for us, now was, you know, tw or 2,000 years ago. So antichrists appeared 2,000 years ago. It's not some political guy that we're looking forward to in our future. They've been here. Well, first of all, it's more than one guy, and they've been around for thousands of years. So I think that very well uh, closes the door on a lot of our preconceived notions about who this is. Um, I will say there's this phrase, in the last hour, and that has confused people. Um, I, I, I'll argue in this context, as John is using this phrase, this is simply saying our time to prevent this is almost up. This is a warning. Uh, very soon, the Antichrist will be with you. Uh, so be prepared. Your time is almost up. Um, so that's what we find. There's multiple Antichrists, and they've been around for a very long time. Uh, and then we find that in verse 19, they uh, used to be from us or of us, but now they are no longer with us. They have left us. So this is, again, this is John talking. So the Antichrists had formerly been with us and from us. So he had been with the Apostle John, uh, with the church. So what we learn here is the Antichrists at some capacity in the past had been Christian. They, had affili they were affiliated with John. They were affiliated with the church. But they no longer are. They at one point were Christian. They at one point were with the church. Now they have left the church. They are no longer affiliated with the church. And that's what John is warning us about, warning them about. So, used to be Christian, but no longer Christian. And we learn a little bit more in 22. Uh, who is the liar but the one that denies Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. So you've got all these people that used to be in the church, used to be Christians, but they're no longer in the church. They've now since denied, he, denied Jesus is the Christ, denied the Father and the Son. They're no longer living by their faith. Now, interestingly enough, and as we continue to read, we'll see, they're still professing to have a faith. They're, they're false teachers in that way. They say they are Christians, but they deny the Christ. They say that they are of the church, but they deny the very foundation of the church. That is the Antichrist. And so that's what we learn in this passage. Uh, flip with me to, well, actually, one, one last thing that I think is important to note. Notice that John equates the liar and the Antichrist is the same person. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is Christ? This is the Antichrist. So John, in his writings, especially in the epistles, he's going to have this group of people he's talking about, right? The Antichrists. Well, now he's, got, he's equating this group, the Antichrists, with the liar. So we got John talking about the same group of people, referring to them in two different ways, the liars and the Antichrists. And based on that, we can look at a couple of other passages, like, like for instance, John 4, 20, which tells us, if somebody says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love the God whom he has not seen. So what does this tell us about the Antichrists? They don't love their brothers. They claim to love God, but by their actions, they hate their brothers, and they do not love God. So by their actions, they are denying God as well, not just by their words. Um, all right, let's look at our second passage. Second passage is uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. First John chapter 4, 1 through 6. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. That is the spirit of the Antichrist of whom you have heard that it is coming, and now, you have, and now is already in the world. 
You are from God, little children, and you have overcome them, because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. He who knows God listens to us. He who is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So again, we have this idea of antichrists coming into play. So what do we learn from them? Well, they're of the world. The antichrists are already of the world, and they speak of the world. So first of all, a lot of this passage reiterates what we already learned. Um, They do not confess Jesus has come in the flesh. Uh, They are already in the world, but we kind of covered that already. So what we learned from this passage new is about their relationship to the world. Um, John uses this idea of the world a little bit differently than maybe we would think. When we think of the world, we think of, you know, the planet and the the trees and the universe and whatnot. But when John is using this word, he's equating the world to people who do not know God. So the Antichrist are among the people who do not know God. Um, But they are worldly. They speak for the world. The world accepts them. These people that do not know God accept the Antichrist, and they accept the words of the Antichrist because the Antichrists are of the world. They are not of God. And that's what's being clarified here. Um, So they deny Jesus, and they are of the world, of of these other people. And again, notice, we're going to see John equate this group of people he's specifically talking about, these Antichrists, and here he calls them false prophets because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Um, you can test their spirits. They are the spirit of the Antichrist. So again, you've got this same group of people. So John's got this group of people he's warning the church about, the Antichrists, who are also the liars, who are now also the false prophets. These are the same group of people. And John's going to continue talking about these people. Um, final passage. The final time John brings up this idea of the Antichrist is going to be in 2 John 7 through 11. 2 John 7 through 11. For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not acknowledge Jesus is coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourself that you do not lose what you, that you do not lose what we have accomplished, but that you may receive a full reward. Anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God, the one who abides in his teaching. He has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your home. Do not give him a greeting. For the one who gives a greeting participates in his evil deeds. So again, one last time, John brings up the Antichrist, this idea of this person who um, he is participating in sin. He lives in sin. Um, They have gone out into the world and they are coming. They do not acknowledge Christ and they participate in the sin. Um, they, I think it's important to note, this is not saying that they commit sin, but this is saying that they actively and intentionally live in sin. And how do we know this? Well, once again, John is equating these two groups of people. Here, he calls them the deceivers. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. Same group of, per- same group of people, same person, right? Um, so when we look back at John chapter 3, John chapter 3, 7 and 8, we read, little children, make sure no one deceives you. He is the one, the one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. But the one who practices sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. So they do not practice the deeds of righteousness. They practice the, the deeds of unrighteousness. They're children of the devil. So again, we're talking about this group of people, these antichrists. What do they do? They practice sin. They practice unrighteousness. Again, not saying that they occasionally sin, but that they openly participate in sin. They have a lifestyle of sin. So we take all of this, and what do we learn? Um, I'm behind my slides. Uh, What do we learn about the Antichrist? So what? Well, to sum it all up, the Antichrist is one who denies Christ. In many ways, it's that simple. He is anti Christ. He is against Christ. Um, There are many antichrists. They've been around since the first century. This isn't some new idea. This isn't some uh, guy that's coming in our future, but they have always existed. They've always been around. Uh, They deny Christ by their words. 
they are teaching against Christ. They say maybe Christ hasn't come in the flesh. Christ isn't of God. Christ isn't uh, this person who's died for our sins. Instead, they say Christ is not these things. They deny Christ in their teachings. But they're also denying Christ in their actions. They do not live a life as a Christian should, and that is how we recognize them. They deny Christ in the way they live, and they deny Christ in their words. Um, they once were Christians. They used to be of the church, but they are no longer in the church. They claim to be in the church, but they're not. They're not living lives, and they're not speaking words that are conducive to one who is in the church. And Antichrist is not that. Um, he is one who denies. He denies in word. He denies in action. He is anti-Christ in the way he lives. So, what do we learn? And like having described the Antichrist in this way, what we learn is, well, there are many people who live that way, who are as that describes. There are many Antichrists in the world today. Again, not one person, not one uh, small group of people, but any people. And think about that. Uh, who would qualify based on these characteristics that we've seen? Who is the Antichrist in the world today? Well, it's the false teacher, the false prophet. It's the, it might be the megachurch leader who's uh, using prosperity gospel to rob people. It might be the, the other preacher who's, who's teaching that the sinner's prayer is all you need to find salvation. Because that is not Christ. That's not Christ's teachings. That is anti, against Christ's teachings. So who's the antichrist? Well, it might be the atheistic professor who's teaching you God doesn't exist. God doesn't exist. Um, you don't have to live your life in any sort of way. Do what you want, because from ashes to ashes, dust to dust, we all live and we all die. That is an antichrist teaching. That makes him an antichrist. Uh, who's an antichrist? Well, it's all the people in the world who are just living in open sin. All these people who live in sin and have no problems with it. They live lives that are antichrist. And those are the antichrists that we see. So, who's the antichrist? Well, unfortunate truth is there's a lot of people who are antichrist. And that leads us to the more important part of this discussion. What then do we do about this? How do we live knowing that there's these antichrists? How do we deal with it? Um, I contend this. Make sure that you do not allow those who are antichrist to influence you. That is the purpose of John's writing in these, in these epistles. John is writing to make sure that they are aware these people are coming and John is writing to make sure that they do not fall for the temptations that these people are going to give them. Um, and so as we ask ourselves, how then do we live? How do we avoid the influence of these antichrists? Well, we can go back to John's teaching. John's telling these people, how do we avoid the teachings of the antichrist, the influence of the antichrist? So how does John tell the early church to avoid them? We can take these same teachings and apply them to ourselves. And so that's what we'll do. Uh, turn back to John chapter 2. John chapter 2, verses 20 through 24. Um, first of all, notice, um, I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do, and because there is no lie in the truth. And secondly, in verse 24, uh, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you have heard from the beginning abides in you, then also will abide, you also will abide in the Son, and in the Father. So what do we do about this? How do, we a, how do we avoid the influence of the Antichrist? We avoid the teaching of the Antichrist by abiding in truth. We let the truth be known by ourselves, and we let the truth guide us through these teachings of the Antichrist. The Antichrist comes in, and he might teach us, well, you know, Jesus isn't Lord, but we abide in truth. We know truth. Um, and really, uh, John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6, kind of reaffirms the same idea. Um, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. And then verse 6, we are from God. He who knows God listens to us. He who do not, does not know God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of the truth and the spirit of error. So we got this idea. We know truth and we reject error. Um, this idea of truth, as the way John uses it in his writings, it's the idea of everything that comes through Jesus. It's the teachings of Jesus. 
So what is truth? Truth is, Jesus is from God. Truth is, Jesus died for the forgiveness of our sins. And truth is, we need to then follow the teachings that Christ has given us. That is truth. How do we avoid the influence and avoid the teachings of the Antichrist? We dwell on truth. We make sure we know truth. We make sure we are firmly rooted in truth. So then how do we recognize what is not truth? Well, we compare. Um, <laughs> we know what is true, and then based on what we know, we test what we hear. So if an antichrist comes and gives us this false teachings, how do we know if it's true or not? We test it. We put it to the test. We compare it to what we know is true. And if it's not true, we reject. In many ways, it can be that simple. Um, we determine what is antichrist by, by comparing it to the truth. Uh, look at chapter 4, verse 3. Every spirit that does not confess Jesus does not come from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. So we ask ourselves, uh, is this thing that he's telling you, um, is this thing we're being taught, are they confessing Jesus as their Savior? Is this person confessing Jesus as their Savior? If they're not, well, that's, an, that's an Antichrist person. It's something we need to consider and something we need to take into consideration as we, can, as we decide if their influence is going to affect us. And the same with verse uh, 5. They are of the world, therefore, um, they are of the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. Um, and by this we know that the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So are they speaking from truth? Are they uh, living like the world lives, or are they living as a Christian should live? Have they rejected the scripture and turned to a life of open sin? No. That's a pretty good sign they're antichrist. That's a pretty good sign that the teachings that they're giving are also antichrist. So that's how we recognize. How do we keep from being influenced by the antichrist? Well, we know truth and we reject what is not truth, both by the words and by the actions of who we are being influenced by. Secondly, we become aware of who is antichrist and we learn to filter our lives based on what we see. Uh, we see this back in chapter in 2 John, verses uh, 8 through 11. Watch yourself that you do not lose what we have accomplished, but that you might receive a full reward. Watch yourself. Do not lose what you have accomplished. So first of all, it's a warning, right? If we are Christians and we abide in truth and we sit and we are um, firmly entrenched in Jesus' teachings... But then some antichrist influence comes and starts to try to lead us astray. We watch ourselves. We don't want to lose what we have gained in Christ. But secondly, uh, we keep the influence of the antichrist away from us. Uh, consider verses um, 10 and 11. If anyone comes to you and does not bring these teachings, do not receive him into your, into your house. Do not give him a greeting, for the one who gives him a greeting participates in his evil deeds. Um, now, as John is writing, he means this very literally. Uh, in these times where you have a lot of what we would consider like a traveling preacher, you've got guys who are going from city to city, bringing a message, and then leaving. So they're going to come, and they're not going to stay in hotels. They're going to stay with people. So if you find a traveling preacher, and he's preaching something contrary to Jesus' truth, what John is telling these people to do is, do not receive that preacher. Don't have him in your home. Don't support his false ministry. <laughs> But think of it in terms of our application. How do we filter? How do we keep the false teachings of this Antichrist away? Well, we filter him out of our lives. If you have somebody teaching you something that is against God's truth, don't, don't consider it. Reject it. Don't allow it into your lives, but filter it out of your lives. Um, uh, think about what that means. Um, first of all, what it doesn't mean is you don't hide yourself from the entire world and from anything that is against Christ. You can't do that. That's impossible. You can't live in a monastery on your own, completely separated from the world. So it becomes a little bit more practical than that. It becomes more of a do not choose to um, expose yourself to sin needlessly and do not ex choose to expose yourself to these false um, to these false um, influences needlessly. Don't cut yourself off from the entire world, 
but don't choose to dwell in the influence of what is anti-Christ. That's what we learn here. So you become aware of what is influencing you, and you filter what's influencing you in the wrong ways. Avoid what is anti-Christ. So that leads us to, to our actual application. How do we avoid the influence of the Antichrist? First, we recognize what is Antichrist. Um, and we do that by testing the spirits. Test what you see. Test what influences you. Uh, remember John chap, 1 John 4, verses 1 through 6. Test the spirits to know if they are from God or from these false prophets. Uh, how do you know? Okay, well, are these messages confessing Jesus? Are these messages saying Jesus is the Christ? If they're not, that's anti-Christ. Um, and then, verse 5, ask yourself, do these teachings, do these uh, influences have a respect for Scripture? Do they have a respect for God's truth? Well, if they don't, then they're anti-Christ. And you must recognize that. Recognize what is anti-Christ. Secondly, filter what you consume. Take a consideration for the influence of what is you are consuming. Um, are you going out of your way to uh, watch things and to, to interact with people that are only tearing you down, that are only ripping you away from God's truth, that are influencing you away from God's truth and towards error? Consider that. Filter away what you can and don't expose yourself to those things. And limit. Limit what might lead you astray. Um, and, you know, it's impossible to keep away from all the worldly influences, from all these antichrist influences. But you do have the option to take a lot of it out of your life. You have the ability to limit the, uh, the, the false doctrines, limit the, the influences that lead you into sin, limit the temptations that you have in your life. Limit these, limit these when you can. Don't expose yourself to false teaching and don't expose yourself to sin needlessly and without good reason. Because we are. We are still called to minister to this world. You can't take yourself out of this world completely. But you can take the influences of this world out as much as possible. So what do we learn? Well, above all else, we as Christians need to be rejecting what is antichrist and dwelling on what is pro-Christ, if you will. That's what we learned here. The Antichrist is not some monster or boogeyman that we as Christians have to worry about coming in the future. It's not one individual, but it's any person that is denying Jesus with their words and with their actions. And that's who we need to be worried about in many ways. We filter what is Antichrist out of our lives, not dwelling on what is against Christ, but focusing on what is pro-Christ. As Christians, that's what we are called to do. Um, so how do we dwell on what is pro-Christ? Well, we focus on his truth. We focus on his word. We focus on what is strengthened by God. We focus on being coming strengthened by God's word. And we focus on becoming strengthened by the church and the fellowship we have together. Um, as we consider what influences us, do not be, do not be influenced by what is antichrist, but allow God to influence you. Allow the, what is pro-Christ to influence you. And so antichrists exist, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Christ is supreme all over, over all of these people. Christ reigns supreme over what is antichrist. And so that's my encouragement for all of us. That's my encouragement for this morning. You know, this is Halloween. This is the Halloween season. Maybe a lesson like this can come in useful as you interact with people who, you know, love this kind of stuff. Maybe you can use some of this information in order to, uh, you know, talk to people. But more than anything, I hope you can all take away from this lesson uh, the need and necessity of, for all of us to avoid what is antichrist. And so at this time, maybe, maybe it's a bit of a wake-up call. Maybe some of us have been living lives that deny Christ in our words and deny Christ in our actions. Maybe we have become at least a little bit antichrist ourselves. And this is your opportunity to turn away from that. Um, are you antichrist? Well, change. You can make that change at this time. You can make that change at any time. And now is a great opportunity to do, to do so. Change your life, turn around, and uh, deny what is antichrist in your own life. Maybe you aren't, and hopefully you aren't. As Christians, we shouldn't be.
but maybe we have uh, the influence of those who are antichrist encroaching in on our lives. Maybe we have um, these worldly influences that are causing us to question, causing us to turn away from proper truth and to turn away from God's proper truth, uh, falling into doubt, falling into false teachings. And if that's the case, take this opportunity to become strengthened in God's truth. Uh, that's part of what the church here can do. That's part of our ability to support one another. And maybe it's just the, the encroaching sin and the influence of the world, the influence of the Antichrist among the world that causes us to give into temptation. And I would call you, each and every one of you, walk away from that which influences you into sin. Walk away from the influences that are Antichrist and focus more on what is pro-Christ. Spend time in the truth. Uh, make sure you are firmly rooted in God's truth so that you're not tempted by what is antichrist. Um, all these things are very real ways that we can be influenced by the world. All of these are very real teachings that we can take away from this. And so I encourage you, if you have any of these needs, now is your opportunity. Um, if we can help you in any way, then please take this opportunity to come forward now as we stand and as we sing.